Singing Aliens, which uh, is only a couple years old. Whatever I'll find a way to live here tonight. Maybe I'll hitch a ride with aliens aliens. Whatever I'll find a way to leave here tonight Maybe I'll hit you right with aliens and aliens I do like that song. Anyway, welcome to the Morning Banana Show. We're at uh, number 80, as the fancy... I'll say, I'll put this guitar down somewhere. Where I do like this guitar. I don't want to ruin it. I'll keep that right there. It's somewhere soft. Welcome to the Morning Banana Show. My name is Adam Josh. That is what my mama named me. I got a coffee here and a banana. The 80th one that we're sharing together. Ah. And I thought today. I would uh, put on something a little bit nicer, and we could chat. All right, there we are. Camera one and camera two, we're good, we're live. Let's assume that we're live. Either way, I'm recording it. I believe I'm, yeah, I'm recording over there. Okay, so Morning Banana Show number 80. And uh, some of you who follow me on Twitter, at adamjosh.com on Twitter, would know that I had said, Dropping the hammer. Dropping the hammer today on the Morning Banana Show, so stay tuned. And uh, let me not disappoint you. So, one thing that I want to talk about real quick is the people who are protesting. You're going to your state capitals, you're going to your provincial capitals, your local town hall, city hall. And I just have to ask... Uh, what exactly it is that you're protesting. What are you protesting? Are you protesting the flu? Are you protesting the coronavirus, the woo flu? Are you protesting... What exactly are you protesting? So depending on your answer, it would, uh, it would change my opinion. For instance, if you're a business owner, who has an existing business and wants to get back to work, wants your employees to be able to go back to work. I understand that. That sucks because you have a business, you have you know, obviously are doing what you want to do with your life and invested your time into your business and now you want it to be open. God forbid. So you're protesting. I understand as a business owner, if you want to go protest, that's, that's A-OK -okay in my books. But um, if you are out there protesting that you want to get back to your minimum wage job or you want to get back to your job that was just paying the bills, I, I really am wondering what exactly you're protesting for. You, you want things to get back the way they were? Now, a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of you who watch me and, and who know me um, know that I talk to a lot of people on the right side of things and on the left side of things. 
So people who lean right, people who lean left, people who are conservative and more liberal, whatever that is supposed to mean these days. But um, people who are on the right, or conservative people, or educated people, will usually know all about the Federal Reserve, know all about how the money that you're spending is usually backed up from nothing out of nowhere, created by fiat from the central banks of the world, owned by banking families such as the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds. So, you know that the system, the banking system that you're under, and the money that you're being paid, um, if we weren't under a lockdown right now, you would be complaining about, you know, the minimum wage should be more, you should be being paid more, your taxes are um, unjustifiable, and a lot of you that I know don't even pay taxes. <clears throat> I do pay taxes, by the way. So, if you're protesting to get back to your minimum wage job, getting paid in this fiat money lending system, I really got to ask you directly, like, what the hell is wrong with you? Things were never good. You know, our money in Canada and in America, your money isn't backed up by gold or silver. You want to get back to that system? Like, the system is breaking right now, right? People are saying, get into Bitcoin, get into gold. And I've been saying get into gold since 2008. You can go look on my website. I was saying to invest into Verichip, into silicone chips and things that are implantable back in 2008. I was saying to invest in it. Have I ever invested in that? No, I never have. Never will. I, don't, you, I mean, you should know me by now. But, um... But if you were of that mind of just wanting to make money, then to me there's more important things than money. But when people are protesting and getting upset to go back to a system, like things were so bad, you know, getting paid minimum wage, going to your job, you know, six days a week, you hated it, you hated your boss, you hated your life, you hated the money that you were making, you hated the taxes you were paying. But you want to get back to that? You want to get back to that. So here we go. We have this scenario right now where the system is, is breaking, right? And the people who are like 50 years old, the Gen X's and the Boomers around there, that age group, they're reminding me of our parents. I'm, I'm born in the 80s, right? They're reminding me of our parents when the internet was invented, saying it's just a fad, you know, it'll go away. You know, they want to get back to the way, the archaic way things were done. Like, things were never good, even in their lifetime, but they were able to make a living and pay for things and, you know, have a house. And maybe one parent was working, and that was good. But don't be illusioned. The th things were never good. If there wasn't a lockdown right now, if there was no such thing as a coronavirus, you guys would be complaining about something else. But now it's, we want to get back. We want to get back to our hamster wheel. It's a rat race. You want to get back in your car, sit on the 405 for three hours every day, sit on the QEW for two hours every day. You want to get back to that? What are you, a rat? You're a mouse? You want to get back to your hamster wheel so at the end of it you can get your cheese? Nobody has been talking about this. Just me. I haven't heard anybody talk like this to anybody right now, especially during the lockdown. <clears throat> so these are my own original thoughts. You can feel free to uh, tell them to your friends like they're your own. But the re this is the reality, is that the system is breaking around us. And people want to get back to the way things were. Uh, now, things... In generally, generally speaking, could go back to the way things were. I, it's not that I'm sitting here saying that we're never going to get back to work. I feel like uh, those people who are who have their businesses and their salons, eventually things will get back to quote unquote normal. But uh, as far as the economy goes, I mean, the writing's on the wall. Now listen to this: the economies of the world have to crash. The U.S. dollar, Canadian dollar, 
you know, Euro, the failed experiment, the, all of them, they all have to crash in order to offer the global solution of a one world currency, right? So taking a longer view and realizing that the system eventually has to change, that's where it's headed towards to a more uh, unilateral, uh, monolithic cur currency. And to, to know that the world is, is heading in that direction, you take a step back and say, okay, these are the fits and the starts of an economic system that's going to change. Years ago, I was reading about the BRICS alliance, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South America, creating um, a currency based on a basket of commodities, based on actual real things. Now, if I was to ask you, hey, you know, we know that the economic system, be it in Canada, be it in the United States, be it in Australia, be it in wherever you're watching from, usually the economic system isn't the greatest, right? You could think of better ways to do it. But what are the best ways to run an economic system? What, are the, what is the best way? You know, for, the, for years, it was the American gold standard. Your, your dollar was actually tied to a physical gold, amount of gold, which, I mean, we can be nostalgic, right? This is the thing. This is where I, re the point I really wanted to bring home today to people, for people watching this is that, uh, you can be nostalgic and say, I wish things could go back to the way things were. Let's go back to the gold standard, right? Like when was the federal reserve act signed? Does anybody know? I don't even have any notes. I'm doing all this from memory. I, I've been studying this stuff since I was in my teens. I'm almost 40. This is my life. I don't usually give my personal opinions like this on the Morning Banana Show, but today I thought, let's do it. I usually like to deal in facts. And not my personal opinion. Anyway, the Federal Reserve Act was signed in uh, 1913, 1914. Look it up. After the Titanic, a quote-unquote sunk, which was another big scam by the White Star Line, insurance scam, get rid of all the competition, and get paid to do it. J.D. Rockefeller, etc., <clears throat> etc. Et Look it up. So. Federal Reserve Act was signed, basically, let's just say 100 years ago, 1913, 1914, you can look it up. Signed 100 years ago. 100 years ago. So, for 100 years, your parents, my parents, and us, and their parents, <clears throat> we've all been living under this system, economic system of the governments are borrowing from a Federal Reserve Central Bank at interest. Sometimes the interest rates are low, sometimes the interest rates are high, but there's interest, right? They borrow that money. The American taxpayer, the Canadian taxpayers, we pay that debt back. So the banking families of the world wind up with real, tangible, physical assets as a result of us paying with our taxpayer dollars to them for money that they've given to us out of nothing, out of nowhere, created by fiat. Now the paper has value because it's made of trees, right? Sometimes, sometimes it's plastic nowadays. The printing presses and the lights and all that that goes into making the money has a cost. But your hundred dollar bill isn't worth a hundred dollars. Are we clear on that? Your hundred dollar bill is not worth a hundred anything. It's a piece of paper. So to say, let's get back to the gold system. Okay, this is a hundred years ago. Like, wake up. This is 2020. The hell are you talking about? Living a hundred years ago in the past. Your parents couldn't do it. Your grandparents didn't stop the Federal Reserve Act. So like, we didn't stop the Federal Reserve Act. We were unsuccessful. People can talk about new economic models and new economic systems, but up until now, it has not happened. You're paying your taxes. You're living in this world the same as I am. So let it go. Wake up. So you want to get back to that? You want to get back to what? Your terrible, crappy job that you, you hate? What, you want, to get, you want to send your kids back to public school? Do you know what they're being taught? We have our kids at home right now. We're teaching them ourselves. 
So you're, if somebody asked me, hey, Adam, you want to come and protest that the school should open? No. No, I don't. I would rather teach my kids at home. I would rather the kids get taught at home. I would rather private school my kids. What are you talking about? You want to send them back to public school? So right now, I'm, I'm on EI because I've worked, right, for my entire life. I'm on EI. So you're, if somebody asks me, hey, Adam, do you want to go back to your job? You want to go back? Yeah, I, I like fixing things for a living. I, I, like, I like working with my hands. I like taking care of customers. Don't get me wrong. But am I in a hurry to get back to that? Do I want to go back to that? Am I in a hurry to go back to the hamster wheel? There's ways that I can make a lot more money. And uh, to be paid pretty much the same to, to be at home? No. I, I, I'm not in any big hurry to go back. I'm not going to be in a protest. I don't. The economic system that we're under is not ideal. To, say, to ask me, hey, Adam... What's your, uh, what's your answer to get into the new economic model? Does it matter? Okay, people have ideas, right? People talk about, oh, look, invest in Bitcoin. Invest in this uh, digital currency. Bill Gates has his own uh, idea and his own cryptocurrency. Look it up. Bill Gates' cryptocurrency. He's already got the patents on it. While you were sleeping, dreaming about going back to 100 years ago, Bill Gates has been planning ahead. And by the way, uh, the plans are rolling out around you. ID 2020 and his cryptocurrency, where the individual people are the... <laughs> You are the crypto miners. <laughs> you're the servers. You're everything. One-stop shop. You don't need the server farms anymore. The humans are the server farms. Look it up. Look up the patents. I'm not making this stuff up. So Bill Gates has his idea about what the future is. You know, you've been reading about uh, the mark of the beast for a long time. With with uh, with or without that chip, you won't be able to buy or sell, right? Aaron Russo, before he died, was talking about that years ago. So again. We can go on nostalgically about trying to get back to the way things were, but you and I have not been able to get things back to the way things were in our lifetime. With all our protesting and all our online blogging and all our talking to our friends, we've educated each other, and now we're so smart. But what has our smartness done for anybody but ourselves? I mean, I, I plead with people. I do these videos for free. I talk to people on the phone. I talk to people on Twitter. I talk to people on my website. They email me. And um, what if we were only awake and aware for ourselves and our friends and our family? But anyway, yeah, getting back to the kids situation. Yeah, we have, it's a whole new, so the model is breaking, right? And maybe school will go back to the way things were. But if you're going to ask me, hey, Adam, uh, you want your kids to go back to school right now? No, I'd rather not. If we could school them, if we could educate them at home with the curriculum that we're being handed from the government of Ontario, then I'm fine with that. It takes a little getting used to, but hey, you know, I would rather be educating my kids, wouldn't you, than strangers at school? So, as far as the economic system that we're under right now, you know, I get paid a pretty decent wage, but a lot of people out there, for instance, uh, let's just use the example of McDonald's workers, okay? You're a McDonald's worker right now. You're at home, you're on um, the CERB, you're on some type of employment benefits because of the current situation with the lockdown, right? There's people that, that are working at McDonald's right now. So those are considered essential workers. And then there's staff that have been furloughed or laid off, right? So people have been talking about, you know, when eventually the lockdown is over and those workers that are furloughed can get back to their jobs, the ones that have been working, the essential workers, should be uh, able to take a paid break, some sort of holidays or whatever, because they've been working through this intense time. Do you honestly think that they're gonna, that any of these workers are gonna get a break? I don't see it happening. Now, when the when the furloughed workers come back to the, we're talking about McDonald's again. When the furloughed McDonald's workers come back to McDonald's, um, you don't think there's gonna be some internal hostility between these two? You've been working here the entire time. You haven't. What if this guy's getting paid more than this guy? What if the guy who's actually been working this entire time uh, is being paid less than the furloughed worker? A lot of animosities coming down the track, I predict, between the people who are, were stuck working during this time and the people who weren't. And why should the people uh, who are coming back to work be paid more than the essential workers? So... And then when we get back to work, it'll be the economic reboot and it'll ramp up to eventually, maybe a few years from now, we'll get back to the way it was. 
but you enjoyed the way it was, right? You enjoyed your hamster wheel. Don't give me that. You're smarter than that. I'm smarter than that. We know it's a broken system. So if this is the fits and starts of a system that is dying, which we all know it is, then instead of being nostalgic about the 100 years ago gold standard and I have these, all these ideas and I think I'm so smart, uh, why don't you take a step back and, and take matters into your own hands, financially speaking, whatever way you can, and then accept the fact that just like your parents, we're living in a time that things are going to change. If you thought that you could change uh, going from the gold system to the Federal Reserve uh, Central Banking System, uh, if you thought you could, your window of opportunity has already passed 100 years ago. So if you think that you're going to change and your voice is going to be uh, affecting the current economic system changing from the way it is to a digital e-commerce system where everybody has a chip and, you know, they can turn it on and turn it off, according to Aaron Russo and John the Revelator in the Bible. If you think that you can change that, like, your opportunity is right now. So I uh, use your voice, like, literally right now. We are living through that generation that's going to have a say. And it's not going to be you that gets chipped, by the way. <laughs> it's going to be your kids and their kids. The kids you can't get unstuck from a smartphone. The kids that you can't take away from the screens. The, the, the hopelessly addicted screen addicts who are playing World of Warcraft and, and uh, first-person shooter games right now, they're not going to have any problem with getting chips. And if, if um, they do have a problem, like again, this isn't for you. These chips aren't for you. Are you dumb? Like They're not for you. Come on. They're not going to have to force you to get a chip. The, ki the kids are going to want to get a chip. Nonsense. Anyway... <clears throat> That's been the Morning Banana Show, number 80. Follow me on Twitter at adamjoss.com. Think of a silence. An imaginable brain, but I know you. Well, you know me so well.